we have understood what counting sort is, right? Now let's go and understand the time and space complexity of counting sort, right? For that, we'll go to the pseudocode because it's easiest to understand in the context of the pseudocode, right? So let's go. So what, see, let's see, this takes order of K, right? So let's, let's write down, right? Let's write down. So these two steps basically take order of K, right? What about these two? This is order of N, right? This is order of n. What about this? This is order of k. Right? What about this? This is order of n. You don't have any complex recursions or anything. So the total time it takes is basically order of n plus k. Okay? Where n is the size of your input array, a, and k is the number of unique values or the or the or the range of values because we said a contains values from 0 to k. Right? So the total time complexity, both worst case, best case, everything, the time complexity is order of n plus k. Typically, typically, if k, if k itself is order of n, right? If k itself is order of n, then, right? Then I can write it as order of n plus n, which is, then the whole time complexity, look at it this way, right? If k itself is order of n, okay, if k itself is order of n, this whole thing will become order of n, right? Very simple. So the time complexity of counting sort, assuming, this is the assumption, assuming that k itself is order of n, is order of n. If k is not equal to order of n, then the time complexity is order of n plus k, okay? If you have k distinct values in the range of 0 to k that you have in the input array, right? That's important. So time complexity is straightforward. You just analyze the loops. What about space complexity? Okay, what about space complexity? Your input is array A of size N. We have to have two more arrays, right? You need to see because you're not able to, uh, because you're using these two arrays in this code, in this code especially. In this code, you're creating a new array of size, of size K. So you have order of K here in terms of space. If B is already given to you, then you don't have to worry. If B is, B is not given to you, you need to count it also. So B itself, the size of B is order of N, is exactly N actually, because it's the same as the input array. If B is given to you, you need not count. But if B is not initialized and given to you, you have to return B, right, in that case. So the space complexity is often written as order of N plus K, right? So it is order of N plus K if B is not given to you. If B is given to you, then it is order of K. So there is this small implementation detail that you have to worry about, right? It's a small implementation detail. And if K itself, remember, if K itself is order of N, then it doesn't matter, okay? Then whether you're given B or not, the total time complex, the total space complexity is order of N, right? If K is order of N, right? So the space and time complex analysis of counting sort is straightforward because all we have is for loops. We don't have any recursion or something crazy the way we had in uh, we had in quick sort or merge sort. This is straightforward going through the loop, right? Nothing very fancy. This is straightforward, extremely simple analysis.